I'm Edie Lush, and I'm here inside the Hub Culture Studio. It's 2019 here in Davos. Really pleased to be joined now by Stephanie Menards, the Global Chief Commercial Officer for Marriott International. Now, we spoke two years ago, and it was a really interesting time for Marriott because you'd just gone through that Starwood acquisition. That's right. Now, a couple of years on, the world is changing, I think, faster than it's ever changed before. Let's start with the positive, first of all. Sure. Uh, it's not been a bad time for you guys, right? You've done pretty well. Yeah, overall, the the, the Starwood integration has um, has has gone well. Um, of course, adding uh, eleven new brands to our portfolio to now make it thirty global brands has been absolutely fantastic. And the outlook for global travel is mm -hmm. really, really very strong. And why is that? Well, when you think about it, um, uh, the world population is growing so much. There are so many emerging middle classes around the world, particularly in developing markets. Mm -hmm. And people want to travel. People want to see the world. Uh, millennials also love experiences more than things. You hear a lot mm -hmm. about that across a lot of different industries. My and kids still want things. Well, I think I think in general, you know, the idea of travel or food and beverage, right. I mean, a millennial would rather spend their money on that than a car or a home these days. Right. And so travel is an experience. Um, you know, last year alone, 1.3 billion people took an international trip. That's not, mm. that's on top of um, any domestic travel. Mm. By 2030, that number will grow to 2 billion international outbound trips. So travel is exploding and it's something that consumers really want. With 30 brands in 129 different countries, we have, you know, uh, everything from luxury brands like Ritz Carlton and St. Regis, mm -hmm. in addition in W. Marriott, Sheridan, Courtyards, Moxie, mm -hmm. Element. You know, we have something at every price point and for every sensibility. So the outlook for travel and, and our deep um, depth and breadth in terms of a brand portfolio is, is, is quite powerful. And of course, the acquisition of Starwood has not been without its issues. And of course, and most recently, there was a um, there was some announcements around around some problems with cyber and, and problems with data and security. And when I've interviewed um, people in your position before, the one thing that seems to get people through is being transparent. And I know that that's part of your story. So if you could tell me what it was that, I imagine it was tough and there were a lot of late nights, uh, but what kind of kept you going through it and how do you feel on the other side? Yeah, we announced in the fall of 2018 that we'd had a pretty significant cyber incident that had, um, had dated back um, uh, into the Starwood Reservation database. Um, before we acquired the company. Of course, Starwood did not know that when they sold us the company. Um, but it was um, the first thing that we needed to do, to your point, Eddie, was full transparency. Um, we deeply, deeply regret that this happened. Um, I've worked for Marriott for 22 years, and something like this is very stressful and painful because the trust we have with our consumers mm. as a 91-year-old company is our most valuable asset. Mm. So our first um, and foremost priority was to be completely transparent, get everything out there as quickly as possible, which we did in late November. Um, we immediately put the customer first. We set up call centers around the world, dedicated separate call centers in 12 different languages. Mm. I mentioned our global reach earlier. We set up a dedicated website where we not only published our press releases, but FAQs. And then we also gave free service for a year, web watcher mm. and Experian, depending on where you were in the world, so that you could have your identity monitored on our, on our dime. We mm -hmm. took care of the cost and offered that to consumers who wanted to take us up on that. So again, then we came out in January with um, updated numbers, um, the numbers went down um, from 500 million guest records. That's not unique individuals. People mm -hmm. stay many times at a hotel down to uh, 320. Mm -hmm. And um, and we also um, shared with, um, with our consumers, with, with the world, that we had um, the credit card data with 9 million credit cards, all encrypted. Mm -hmm. So there's been you know no sign of mm -hmm. any type of... Um, of credit card issues and in terms of passports, which was the other topic that was mm -hmm. of, of great interest to people, that number, five million unencrypted, those were unencrypted passports. Mm -hmm. And the State Department has come out and said there's nothing to worry about, no need to get a new passport, no one can do anything with the passport. But we also recognize that people are sensitive, that's their data mm -hmm. and information. So how can we make sure people feel very confident um, that we're doing everything possible to make sure that um, you know, uh, their data is protected going forward. Mm -hmm. So again, um, I think that I think transparency um, and honesty with your customers is it's the number one way to handle something like this. You've also been dealing, um, dipping your toe into the sharing economy, and I wonder if you could tell me um, tell me about that because the sharing economy and um, places like Airbnb um, are often seen as as challenges to the hotel market. But do you see it also as an opportunity? I absolutely see it as an opportunity. You know, the sharing economy 
in total is something like three to four billion dollars. I mean, overall, mm-hmm. right? Not just home sharing, but ride sharing, etc. So it's a very big market, and home sharing, of course, has grown. Uh, not just um, you mentioned Airbnb, but um, you know whether it's VRBO or Homeway, mm-hmm. other players too. Mm-hmm. And we um, we decided to get in to this space in a way that was complementary to our hotel business. And um, specifically, we are piloting in four cities right now. Um, we started in London, added Paris, Lisbon, and Rome. Homes that are more in the um, the higher end, mm-hmm. um, uh, you know, four plus stars. If you're mm-hmm. thinking uh, from a hotel equivalent, um, full homes, you know, not couches and apartments. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, two plus bedrooms, um, washer dryer, and we've also branded them, which is something that no one's done before under mm-hmm. our one of our brands, just for the pilot at least. Tribute Portfolio Homes. Tribute mm-hmm. is one of our thirty brands. So we have 24-hour service. We have a welcome wizard that welcomes you when you Mm -hmm. come in, et cetera. So there's some real distinctions between what we're offering versus some of the other players. Mm -hmm. And I think the most compelling point, um, it's it's made our pilots quite successful, is the ability to earn and burn loyalty points Hmm. as part of our loyalty program, which has just recently been renamed and rebranded, as a matter of fact. So it's another element to our loyalty platform that adds value. And finally, I want to ask you about women in the workplace, because... uh, you know, when we talked a couple years ago, I think the big issue that year was how many women there were at Davos. Now, I don't think the number of women at Davos has increased remarkably, but that aside, or including that in your answer, um, tell me what it's like in Marriott these days, because I think you have a, a, um, a pretty good record there. Yeah, we do. In terms of Davos, I think the numbers haven't changed, really. I think it's mm-hmm. a little north of 20% last year, this year. I mean, that's up from less than 10% in the early 2000s, but still right. not where it needs to be. Um, and, of course, you know, women are only, what, 5% of the CEOs of S&P 500. So, mm-hmm. you know, there's still a lot of work to be done. Our company, I am, I am really proud to say, I think we've made a lot of progress um, in the C-suite. So I report to the CEO. He has 10 direct reports, five of whom are women. Um, and so 50% of mm-hmm. the the people in the C-suite, you know, there's real gender equity mm-hmm. in, the, in the executive ranks. Eight women in our company lead business divisions of 100 million or more. We're very focused on female ownership of our hotels and, and in terms of diversity of our, our vendors and partners, uh, women amongst other um, a, a different groups. So I think we have, are taking this idea of diversity and inclusion very, very seriously and are committed to it. There's real meat behind mm-hmm. the words. It's not just, you know, doesn't just sound good, mm. um, but I think as a as a general um, statement, there's a lot more progress we need to make in the world on that front, and uh, we're not moving fa- forward uh, fast enough, in my in my opinion. <laughs> Stephanie, thank you very much for stopping by the Hub Culture Pavilion, the studio here in Davos, and I'm Edie Lush.